David. Hey, How you doing? Good. Come good on in. You. Fantastic. Welcome to The Journey, driven by Enterprise, where we talk to the Brisbane Bandits players and coaches about their journey in baseball. You've got quite a journey, and I want to get started right away. Okay, let's All go. All right. Of all the Australian baseball players who have made it to the major leagues, your career was probably the first one to really strike it big. I, I know you don't want to short the people who came before you, but you made an all-star team. You had a pretty established major league career with the Milwaukee Brewers. I want to start at the beginning. How does someone in Australia grow up playing baseball? Yeah, it's a lot different uh, for kids growing up now. It's really, it's actually diff difficult to explain how different a culture it is. Um, when I grew up here back in the, you know, 70s and early 80s, as a kid going to state school and high school, really you had cricket in summer and the rugby league in, in wintertime, and they were really the two sports. Um, you know, there wasn't much on TV. Um, other states played other, ga other games, AFL and uh, rugby union, but that was really about it. So, you know, I'm the youngest of four boys in the family. My dad was a real sporting guy, very, very successful in his own personal um, you know endeavors in sport and he was really good at cricket he really uh, really excelled at cricket and did some pretty incredible things uh, on the cricket field and I think the story goes when he was younger I, he was walking past a, and saw a game of baseball and just really intrigued him the speed of the game you know compared to what was five-day cricket back then I think the speed of the game and and that really just intrigued him and and that started his journey uh, on baseball. And I think the fact that you just couldn't get much of it, given that there wasn't much to show, show in Australia, just made it even more special. So for me growing up in, in, in Brisbane, you know, we were always a baseball family, but the obstacles were a lot different. A, a big part of what dad did was build, build clubs. So as a family, we always seemed every couple of years we were at a different club starting a club. And, you know, my memories, growing up was you know him on a Sunday morning getting up early going to the field stocking the canteen you know driving around and picking up most of the the kids just to make up a team you know so that was it's 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 remarkably different from what it is now um but that that was it we were just a crazy mad sporting family but baseball was this one thing that we gravitated to and and it never went away we we kept enjoying it more the game kept growing and um you know, obviously, I was born with with some abilities that that uh, you know were good for the sport. You mentioned that your dad played cricket, and you played cricket as well. In the Australian baseball community, there's always been kind of a, a talent pipeline going from cricket to baseball. What do those two sports have in common in terms of fundamentals? Well, I think trying to hit a round ball. You know, the the hand-eye coordination, the skill that is involved in you know trying to hit a, a moving ball whether it's swinging or bouncing compared to being pitched in in baseball there's a real challenge there hitting hitting in the two sports are, are incredibly different I mean I grew up playing cricket and was very involved in cricket all through you know, high school and, and below that and um, at some levels it's the same but but I think it's just the type of person wants to play the game you know cricket was a lot slower then they've really evolved cricket where there's different formats of the game which basically they just taken all the good parts of baseball and applied it to cricket so that's you know what the big bash is and all the different codes of it is it's like going to a major league baseball game so you know they've evolved in that way but I think that's the type of person you have that likes the, the hand-eye coordination swinging a bat hitting a ball. So you grow up in Australia playing baseball you're obviously quite good how do you first garner the attention of major league baseball scouts? Again radically different from from now um, you know, one of the first senior teams, as we call it, to tour the states was, was a team called the Queensland Rams. They came before the Bandits, they were very successful. They dominated uh, baseball in the 80s, the Collection Shield, and I grew up as a young young kid watching that, and then just the timing of it, when I, when I just turned 16, uh, they took an end-of-season trip to the states. Um, and that, that had never been done before, apart from a national team going. It was the first time they'd had some private backing, and they took like a two or three week trip to the States. And I was uh, 16, and, and they decided to take two younger, two or three younger players, and I was one of them. And uh, what an experience. First of all, being able to hang out with 
um, you know, my heroes growing up, you know, I grew up, my brothers were older, older than me, so at one level they were just my brother's friends, which made it comfortable for me, um, but at another level they were the players I'd admired, and, and to spend a couple of weeks traveling through Arizona and California with them, sharing, sharing rooms with them, and, um, you know, just learning a little bit there, but that was where, where it really started happening, um, you know, and, and then following on from that, I kind of played well as a 16-year-old. We played against some teams, um, San Diego State, uh, Arizona State. I think we went and visited. We played against some minor league teams, and, and I, I did some good things. So the coach at the time, a guy named Mike Young, asked me to, he was from Chicago. He asked me to end that trip if I'd be willing to go live in Chicago for a few months. And, uh, you know, it took me two seconds. I just jumped on the phone, asked Dad if I could do it. It was an automatic yes, and, and when the team at the end of that trip in early April, went back to Australia. I, I went on to Chicago and lived in his parents' attic in, in downtown Chicago. And uh, as a 16-year-old, I just spent my days watching the Cubs on TV and going to hitting hitting cages and just doing all the stuff and just being consumed by baseball in every way like you couldn't in Australia. So um, from there, I had a workout with the Cubs, had a workout with a few teams I played in a city league with with adults so I was a 16 16 year old kid from Australia playing against you know um, 20 25 year old released professionals so that that for them was a bit of a culture shock for me it was pretty consistent with what I'd been doing for for a year or so so um, and then I came back and played in collection shield and and uh, a couple scouts followed me back over here I think I think there was three teams interested with me when I signed I just turned 17 in January of January of 1987 and um, you know to have three teams interested in you was back then was was a big deal now pretty much every team is represented over here in Australia one way or the other 